Hello again, Wired Fam. Hope everybody's doing well this week. We're gonna do something special this week for you guys. I get asked all the time, what knot do I tie for crappie fishing? What is the best knot for crappie fishing? Well, this week, we're gonna talk about it. We got some nylon string, some bright neon nylon string for you guys. We're gonna tie these knots for you so that you can see the knots that I use for each presentation and what I believe is the best knot for crappie fishing. So we'll be right back with you. guys welcome back so again knots knot 101 what is my go-to knot well I have several knots that I use for different presentations but I'd say the one that I tie the most is probably going to be a loop knot a loop knot is probably going to be the knot that I tie 85% of the time uh, but a double uni knot is probably going to be tied just as much as my loop knot because that's how I tie my braid fluorocarbon leader. So I tie those kind of in parallel to one another, right? But the knot that I use the most to the jig would be the loop knot. Why do I use a loop knot? Okay. Most important reason. Let's talk about the most important reason I use a loop knot. I use a loop knot because it allows that jig to free float on that knot. It's not tight to the line. It allows that jig to move naturally um, to where I get a more natural presentation, okay? The bait will sit horizontal in the water, okay? Instead of sitting canted with uh, some of your other knots that are tight to the eye of the jig, it allows that bait to set horizontally and, and look, give a more natural appearance. So that's why I tie a loop knot. Do I use a loop knot to shoot docks? Yes, I use a loop knot to shoot docks. I'll use a loop knot to do just about anything with a single jig head, okay? I also tie loop knots when I'm longline trolling, and the reason I tie loop knots when I'm longlining is same same reason. I want that jig to be able to naturally move in the water without being tight to the line. So that's why I tie a loop knot. It's a very good knot. So let me show you guys how I tie a loop knot. All right, guys, so we got our hook, okay? For all intensive purposes, this is our the eye of our jig head, okay? So you wanna run your line through the eye and you wanna pull out about 12 to 14 inches, okay? So pull a 12 to 14 inch tag line. You wanna grab both, okay? Grab both the tag line and the main line. So you're gonna grab your tag end and your main end you're gonna put two fingers out, okay? See how I have that jig laid in my palm. I wanna go around my fingers twice. One, two, okay? Now this is gonna be a little difficult because it's a little larger than a jig head, but I wanna take that right back through that line, okay? Between my fingers. So I'm gonna take it right back through there, okay? Then I just want to grab the main line and the tag line and just start easing them off my fingers. Just ease it down. Okay, right like that. And just ease it down tight. Okay, there you have it. There's your loop knot. All right, guys, it's that simple. Then you can come down here. And you can cut that tag end off. There you have it. There's your loop knot, guys. It's very simple. Why is it called a loop knot? Because it creates a loop. That's exactly why. Creates that loop. 
there's your loop knot it allows that jig to to move around freely inside that loop okay very simple so let's do it one more time cut this off all right there's the eye go through the eye pull about 12 to 14 inches grab both lines go around your fingers twice one two then you want to cross this jig over okay can everybody see that you want to cross it over and you want to go right back through the loop it's a little easier with an actual jig okay then you want to pinch it and just ease it down Okay, there you go. And just pull it tight. There you have it. That's simple. Loop knot. Very, very quick knot. Doesn't take any time. Okay, we're gonna cut that off there. Does not take. Does not take any time to tie, guys. It's a very quick knot. All right. Uh, you can have a jig off and back on in a matter of 30 seconds. So it's a very quick knot. It's a very useful knot, very good knot. I, I really like it. Now, one thing I will say about a loop knot, if you're a tournament fisherman, is you do have to be cognizant because you have play in your knot. A lot of times when that fish grabs that jig and that fish will come towards you or go left or go right, a lot of times when you set the hook, you're snapping that loop, okay? So you gotta be aware that you're snapping that loop. And after so many fish, if you're tournament fishing, I mean, if you're fishing for fun, it's not that big of a deal. If you break a loop, so be it. On a, on a scale to one to 10 on how strong that knot is, it's probably a four, maybe a three. So it's not the strongest knot in the world. The knot won't slip. The knot itself will not slip. The loop is what makes it a little weak because you're constantly putting pressure on that loop and snapping that loop. So. Um, be cognizant of that. If you're a tournament angler, you probably need to retie every 20, 25 fish. I've caught 50, 60 fish on one loop and never retied. But if I was swinging two pounders in the boat, probably need to retie that at some point. Uh, so keep in mind, that's your loop knot. Uh, let's talk about the knot that I tie for slip floating, if I'm minnow fishing, okay? And if I'm pulling crankbaits. So if I'm doing anything other than minnow fishing or pulling crankbaits, I'm tying a loop knot. But if I'm minnow fishing with a number two gold Aberdeen hook or I'm pulling crankbaits, I need a, a knot that's a lot stronger because I'm always slack line. I always have a slack line when I'm minnow fishing, when I'm slip floating, when I'm bobber fishing. Always slack line, I'm always popping. Okay, I'm always, when that fish takes that under, I'm always coming off a slack line and hitting that fish hard, trying to get the hook set. So I, I want a knot that's stronger than a loop knot. And then when I'm pulling crankbaits, same thing. So when I'm pulling crankbaits um, for crappie, I always want this knot because I need something strong. And this knot on a scale of one to 10 is probably going to be a nine. Um, there's probably knots that are that are stronger, but as far as strength is concerned, it's a very very strong knot or knot, and that's an improved clinch knot. Okay, improved clinch knot. Some guys call it a fisherman's knot. Some guys call it a beehive knot. Some guys call it a lot of different things, but it's actually an improved clinch knot. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I tie that. All right, again, here's our hook. Okay, here's our eye of our crankbait or the eye of our hook. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the eye. I'm gonna hold me a little bit of a loop right here. And then I'm gonna twist the tag end around my main line four times. One. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right down here to this first loop that we created, and I'm gonna go through that first loop down here at the base. My line's falling apart on me. And then I'm gonna come back through this loop that we created. So we went through the loop at the base, and then we're gonna go through 
this loop that we created back through, and then we're gonna cinch that down, okay? So we're just gonna pull it, cinch that down tight. There is your improved clinch knot, okay? Now, you can see that's tight down too, and you can, you can cut that tag end off very strong knot you can cut it off as flush as you want it will not slip once you have that pushed down it will not slip guys okay so you can see it creates kind of like a little beehive on there that's why some people call it a beehives knot um fisherman knot but the the proper term for this knot is an improved clinch knot okay so let's tie that one more time get that cut off there all right through the eye Okay, pull you about two or three inches of tag end, and then wrap four times. One, two, okay, three, four. All right, so then we're gonna come down here at the bottom through this eye that we created at the bottom here. Now, see that second loop we created here? You wanna come back over the top and through that loop again, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like before you cinch it down. Then you just pull her tight, slide her on down, pull her snug. There you have it, an improved clinch knot. All right, guys, so again, the improved clinch, that is what I tie when I'm pulling crankbaits or um, float, or well, float and fly or a, uh, anytime I'm using a float, okay? If I'm using a float, float and fly or a slip float with a minter, uh, number two gold Aberdeen, I tie an improved clinch knot onto it just so that I have the strength of that knot. I'm not too worried about because if I'm floating and flying, I'm constantly moving that jig, I'm constantly twitching that jig, and it's a up and down, up and down presentation, kind of a, a, a pop and fall, pop and fall presentation, or if I'm using a minna. So if I'm using a minna, that minna is gonna drag that, that hook around, he's gonna move around, he's gonna swim around. I'm not real worried about that minna looking natural, it's gonna look natural. So again, uh, improved clinch on my minna rigs or my crankbaits when I'm pulling crankbaits, okay? Uh, now, that brings me to the last knot that I tie. And again, probably gonna be one of the most important for me because I, I am a braid fisherman. I do like to tie a fluorocarbon leader to my braid. Um, so I like to have that. And this knot has never failed me. This knot has, a double uni knot has not failed me yet. Not that it won't, but it hasn't yet. So. Let me, guy, let me show you guys how to tie a double uni knot. All right, guys, so for this presentation, I'm gonna need two different colors of line. So we've got a little bit of a shoestring here, okay? So we're gonna need two different colors of line so that I can demonstrate to you guys how to tie a double uni, okay? So we're gonna call this pink is our braid. This gray is our fluorocarbon, okay? So what you want to do is you want to overlap these two, as you see I've done here, okay? So you've got both lines overlapped, all right? What you want to do is you want to hold it in the middle. You know, find the center, okay? And you want to hold, pinch it in the center, all right? Now, I'm going to do it laying down first so that you guys can see how I do this, but then I'll pick it up the second time and do it how I normally do. So I'm right-handed, so I always start on the right-hand side. I grab my tag end on the right-hand side and just create a loop, okay? See how I created a loop right there? And then what I wanna do when I create, after I create this loop, okay, is I wanna take both lines and I wanna twist around both lines, one, two, and normally I do it four, but because this is so thick, I'm just gonna do it two tonight. And then pull that down. All right, so that's the gray side. That's our fluorocarbon side. Like I said, normally I'll wrap that four times with my, always four times, but because it's so thick tonight, we're just gonna use two. All right, then I come over here, 
And what I'll do, because I'm right-handed, so it's hard for me to do it with my left hand, but we'll do, it, we'll do it with my left for the purpose of this demonstration. Take the main line, create a loop, just like that, okay? And then wrap it four times. One, two, we're just going to do it two tonight for presentation purposes, but I always do four. And then pull that down. Okay? Now, we've got a knot here and a knot here. All right? Those knots need to come together. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the main line on both sides. Okay? We're going to cinch it down. See how those came together? That's it. It's that simple. There's your double uni. You're ready to rock and roll. You can cut those off just perfectly flush and they will not move. They will not come loose. You're ready to rock and roll. You got your double uni knot, braid to fluoro. You're ready to rock, okay? So that is how I tie the double uni. Now, I will tie that again for you guys. And I'll show you how I normally tie it, okay? So, how I normally tie it, again, I've got my two, two ends, okay? Now this is how I normally tie it, because I'm right-handed. So what I'll do is I'll grab this with my right hand, I'll come around, I'll wrap it four times. Again, for purpose of this demonstration, I'm just gonna do two, because this is a very thick line. Now, this is where you right-handers are gonna thank me. Take this and flip it around, okay? So that your other, so that your other tag end is on your right again because I can't do hardly anything with my left. So one and two. Tie that, pull them together. There it is, guys. Double uni, ready to rock and roll. Cut those off flush and you're ready to rock. You're ready to go fish. Okay, so cut that off flush. Take this tag end. Cut it off flush. Ready to rock. Double uni knot. All right, guys. Those are the three knots that I use. I never tie another knot. I don't have a need for another knot for crappie fishing. Those are the three go-tos for me. If I had to pick one knot that was the go-to knot for crappie fishing, it would be a loop knot, okay? If I had to pick, if I had to take my pick and somebody said, you can't tie but one knot the rest of your life, it would be a loop knot because I can pull crankbaits with a loop knot, I can minter fish with a loop knot, um, and I still get the benefit of the natural presentation and the horizontal presentation of a loop knot when I'm doing, you know, my vertical jigging or my casting or, or uh, things of that nature. So if I had to pick, it would be the loop knot, but those two other knots, the improved clinch and the uni knot, the loop and the uni go hand in hand because I'm tying fluorocarbon to braid. Um, and then the clinch knot or the improved clinch knot is a staple for me. I mean, that's what I've always, that's actually what I started tying when I was just a kid and bass fishing is the improved clinch knot. That's kind of my bass fishing days coming back out because it's one of the strongest knots out there. I mean, you can't, you can't really hardly get a knot much stronger than it. So uh, I hope that helps guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget, live on Wednesday nights, um, 9 o'clock, we go through a lot of good stuff live on the lives. Uh, you guys can ask questions. It's a question and answer for you guys to, uh, to get on and ask questions to me that I can answer live for you that night. And then don't forget about our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you hadn't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. When we get to 10,000 subscribers, we're actually going to give away a weekend fishing trip in East Tennessee with me um, I'm paying for your motel and I'm paying for your fishing license and we're obviously going to fish out of my boat for two days. We're going to fish two different lakes in East Tennessee, two days. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, we're going to choose one lucky subscriber to win that. So if you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button before you leave. I appreciate y'all. As always, God bless. We'll see y'all next week.